6 p.m. in the evening and we've just set off up towards that peak behind me, Clacker. Clacker Trailhead parking space we've just parked in, just in front of me down there. And uh, it's apparently about a 45 minute walk up to the top and you get some great views down the fjords over through Kalsoy. So we'll see when we get up there. Fingers crossed we do get a view. Not sure about the weather this evening. But this is right next to the second biggest town, city on the Faroe Islands called Klaxvik, which is, I think, where we're going to get the ferry from to go over to Kalsoy. I'll double check on that. But yeah, we're going to hike up, six o'clock. Sun goes down about eight. Probably be a little earlier for us because of the mountains in the west. So it'll either be moody, with just a load of clouds. Um, hopefully we get a bit of light. I'm starting to light up a tiny bit now. No, no blue sky yet. But maybe, maybe just maybe in the next two hours. Well, after 45 minutes and a good few stops on the way up because the only exercise I get is when I make these vlogs, which is maybe twice a year. And we've made it. We have made it and this vista is incredible. I mean, with Kalsoy running up there and all of the other islands, which I, I can't quite pronounce or know the names of. Uh, Klaxvik's down there. Ah. Just the views. Um, but in terms of weather, it doesn't look like it's going to clear up in the next hour. It's quarter to seven. Got about how long until sunset? Maybe an hour and a half. It might blow over. Uh, the clouds do move quite quick here, so you never know. So I'm going to set up and be ready for any little bit of light that might pop out. But oh, yeah, this is fantastic. Love it. So there is a few compositions up here, panoramas, but definitely bring a wide angle lens. I put the 50 to 400 on, zoomed into a few things and it's okay. Maybe I can pick out some details in like the far off cliffs and some layers, but the 16 to 35 is rocking here. Um, Kaz has been absolute darling and gone all the way down there. I'm gonna flip you around and you can see where she is. So I'm stood up here, camera, she's down there. She's gonna pose for me in a minute. Hopefully it might actually light up a little bit. And just a small person in an absolutely huge vista of volcanic mountains and fjords. It's just epic. I just absolutely love it. So this is the big panorama that I took. Probably about six or seven shots vertically on the 16 to 35, stitched together in Photoshop. That sky is epic, the light is epic. I've got Kaz in there as well for scale. But before that, the rain had rolled in, so I got this particularly moody shot with the rain going up the fjord. But the sun did come out and the glow of the light coming off the water was fantastic. I also wanted to get some of that light hitting the mountain sides and oh, just an epic sky that evening. day another bout of rain in the Faroe Islands 
And uh, well, this is a kind of nice location, some lovely rocks, but it's just a little bit meh today, a little bit flat. The sea isn't really doing much. The waterfalls are medium, I guess, but it's starting to piss down. <laughs> and, uh, we're just like, well, if the conditions aren't amazing, it's not worth trying to put the condom on the camera and stay here for a bit longer. So I guess we'll just go for a cup of tea. This is uh, yeah, the end of our first week and the start of our second week. And we're going to stay in Funinga, which apparently means finding. Uh, our Airbnb host from last week taught us that the Viking that came from Norway sailed down and landed in Funigan and it actually means finding and it's the place that he found so I think I forgot to say where this is but it's near Iwi I Iwi E I funny D I um, I don't know how to pronounce it uh, maybe I'll just I'll do I'll do a um, I'll do a voiceover and try and mime it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's called that. I wanted to come back here when the conditions were a little bit better. I checked windy and saw that the swell and the waves was going to be a little bit bigger today. And just looking about a bit, it looks a lot more atmospheric than it did the other day. I don't know if you can see behind me, the waves crashing up, creating some big splashes. The sea color looks amazing. It's like turquoise to deep blue and the whitewash is fantastic. So while I'm here, I'm gonna be shooting a little bit of wide landscape with the waterfall and hopefully some big water crashes. And also I'm gonna get the long lens out and try and zoom into some waves and, and do some sort of more abstract wave photography as well because I think the colours are amazing, the shapes are awesome. Just do a fast shutter speed and try and capture it. Yeah, yeah I'm excited. Yeah, let's get into this. I took this one from the drone and I've, you can just about see me in there actually, just standing in front of the waves, nice big view. But then I got the 50 to 400 out and took some abstracts, some really fast shutter speeds of the waves crashing against the rocks. And then I also did a couple of blends. So this is a blend of two shots, one for the big splash and one for the water coming up across, obviously a longer shutter speed for the foreground. And then this last one is Kaz against the splashes. This is my location for sunset today. And I have my phone with me so I can try and pronounce where I am. So we are on the island of Streymoy, which is the biggest island of the Faroe Islands. The town down there is called Nororadolor, I think, and the island is called Kotal, and this is a beautiful location. Look at this lovely sweep that we've got in the background. The sun is setting all the way over there in, let's say, about an hour or so. So hopefully the sky is going to light up tonight. There's a few clouds which should fire up, I hope. But this is a great location for a couple of reasons. There is a road just over there, which has a couple of really tight hairpins in it and you can get just above them and shoot downwards and just get those as a big foreground with this beautiful background and I'm sure you can hear it in my microphone just to my right as a small stream and I have tried to do some slight long exposure half a second one second getting the stream to be a leading line up towards this swoop here and um, yeah I'm really excited for for sunset 
So the first shot I took when we first arrived, right at the top of the valley, and the light was amazing on the rocks. I had to get a shot. But this is probably my best one from that stream. I did struggle with the foreground a little, but I did like that little leading stream up into the background. Thought I'd do a quick update while I'm at this location at the road shop. And as you can see, it's a bit dark in the foreground. There's a streak of light coming through and there's some light on the island out there. But it's, uh, it's okay. And I think it's the time of year. It's currently September and the sun is setting sort of west, west, southwest, east sort of over there. But because we're at a, quite a high latitude, the, the sunset and the sunrises actually do vary quite a lot between each, each month, basically. Um, Come November, the sun will be setting between the island there and this ridge here. So actually the sun will be directly behind and you'll get more sun later in the day coming up this valley, lighting it up. So do check what time of year you're coming. Use a map like photo pills to check where the sun is going to set so you can plan where the light's going to be. This beam of light's coming in and it's quite nice. I've just taking a few shots, three shots to make sure I've got all of the information I need for my photos. But yeah, this is a great location. Just look at that. Just watching this massive rain cloud move across the background was an incredible sight. I just couldn't believe what I was seeing as it was being lit from the sun just before it set. But this was probably the best two photos I took. It's actually a blend of two, one for the foreground and one for the background. The background's obviously a little bit later um, and the foreground, I managed to get a car coming through at one point, so I decided to include that. So this is Saxon, otherwise known as please keep off the grass. You are only allowed to take photos from the asphalt, or so said the shouty lady from just up the road. Behind me is a beautiful bay, which at low tide, you can pay a certain amount of kroner to walk down the path that's on the other side of the valley and make your way down to the beach and around the corner and through that little gap you can see behind me. Right now, tonight, we're not gonna bother going to the beach. We may do that another day. There are two spots to take photos in Saxon. One is exactly where I'm standing, which is behind the museum with these old Faroese buildings with the grass on the top. And the other one is the church, which is just a bit further down. Compositions are limited because you have to stay on the road and keep off the grass, but that is for the animals in the winter. So respect people's private property and respect people's wishes in this area if you want to keep coming back to these beautiful places. Also in this place, there's some absolutely beautiful waterfalls coming down the side of each mountain. I can't remember the names of them. I shall maybe put them on the screen here and also the drive down the valley was a lovely one. Got somebody going to the toilet behind me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I don't think the toilet's in shot. All right, we can't we can't see him pissing. <laughs> Planning. So what I did was check photo pills before I came down and I saw that for this time of year because the angle of sunrise and sunset changes quite a lot the further up the latitudes or further down the latitudes that you go, whether depending on whether you're in the northern or southern hemisphere. But tonight, at least, the sun will be setting just in that crack there, so hopefully we'll get some nice light coming through. I can see my camera lighting up with a bit of sun now, as it must have just come from behind. Yeah, a big black cloud. So, yes, that will backlight these little houses, or maybe shine a bit of light on the church down in the valley. So we'll just stay around this area and take some photos tonight and do the beach another day. I mean, the atmosphere is great here. Just the light coming into the valley and the clouds rolling over, the little church there as well. And then a beautiful red house against the Faroese grass. The sheep just having a munch. And this last shot is the classic view of the museum there with the grass roofed houses and the sun just setting in the valley.
final day here on the Faroe Islands. And I hope you can hear me over the sound of this very engine. But we're on our way to Kalsoy and going to uh, the lighthouse up at the end there. Not so fussed about seeing the place where James Bond died, but the weather says there should be a sunset this evening. That in a hour or two, these clouds are going to break and we shall see a little bit of sunshine. So I'm hoping for some good light on my last day. Fingers crossed. There are a couple of epic shots up there that I want to get. One is back across the very northern ridge, back towards the lighthouse. Very wide angle, should be awesome. And the other one is over the ridge that you walk over, the northern ridge, and shooting back towards some of the other islands, back towards the west. And at sunset, shooting west, that should be good if the sun's popping out in a bit of light. So we booked the ferry online. It was quite easy, actually. We deposited the money on the online portal and then selected the ferry that we wanted. It told you how many places for cars were available. So we booked that. You can't book the night ferry straight away. You have to call a number. But I literally just called the guy and said, how about the ferry tonight, please? He was like, no problem, I'll activate it. Five minutes later, it was available on the online portal to book. And yeah, we're all set for tonight. Fingers crossed, should be all good. And as I say that, look at that. The sun has just popped out. Oh, this is going to be epic. I can't wait. I don't want to go home. It's definitely worth getting your camera out whilst on the ferry. The ferry is not too long, but you might get some lovely pictures like this one looking back towards Clacker. I made it to Kala Lighthouse, which is right next to me there. And behind me, the rest of the edges of the cliffs of the uh, Western Isles of the Faroe Isles. Behind the camera, the other cliffs of the Eastern Isles of the Faroe Isles. And it shouldn't have been that hard to walk. It was about an hour, but oh, yeah, I'm knackered because we've been here for two weeks. I'm unfit and I'm carrying way too much gear because you never know what you might need. But I didn't bring the 24 to 70. I've come up here with the 16 to 35 and the 50 to 400, and hopefully that'll do me for all the shots that I need here. So the shots are down the northern ridge, looking back this way. That's gonna be with the 16 to 35, and then get somebody standing on that ridge, me go over on the eastern ridge, and um, shoot back through here with those cliffs in the background, Lots of perspective compression going on with a long telephoto millimetre focal length. And yeah, sorry, I'm just so tired. <sighs> just over there is also James Bond's grave where he died in the last film. Spoiler if you haven't seen it. But uh, there are hundreds of seabirds flying about. There's probably some other compositions here. I'm gonna have a little play around for about two hours until sunset. I think, actually, yeah, quarter to six now. And the sun goes down at quarter to eight. So another two hours until sunset. So hopefully gonna get some nice light. It's meant to break up a bit the cloud. And yeah, it's gonna have some fun for a couple of hours. Be great. Hopefully the wind doesn't pick up too much either. So I'm up here with Louis from New York. And we are on the northern point of Calo Lighthouse, uh, shooting back towards the lighthouse from where we just walked up from the car park. And it has cleared and it looks epic. The light is fantastic, but we're both finding that 16 mil, we can't fit the whole scene in and it's gonna be at least a three, four shot vertical panorama to fit in all of this from side to side here. I've already shot the cliffs over there with Kaz on the ridge in the middle, just down there. If I just turn you around, it's just beautiful light if you look at that. And yeah, I was all the way over on that ridge, shooting on this ridge, Kaz, those cliffs, and it was between 200 and 400 mil that I was using most of the time to uh, get that perspective compression. But the light is fantastic, the sun's gonna drop down, 
the clouds have cleared a lot more than I thought they would have. So, yeah, we're just waiting for it to fire up a bit. Talk about saving the best till last. These are some of my favorite photos from this trip. The perspective compression here, the seabird, Kaz looking out in the distance and those cliffs with that light. Oh my days, it's, it's just something else when you see that in the back of the camera. I zoomed out a little bit because I wanted to get the swoop of the ridge and also the lighthouse in there, but oh my days, yeah. I just love it. I can't explain how much I love these images and how much enjoyment I had there. I mean, I flew the drone for a bit. You've seen the footage. So I decided to get the sort of Eastern Ridge, which is the one at the bottom right hand corner in as well, leading up to the lighthouse. But finally, this was the panorama I was looking for. It is incredible. The light was just the best and I just can't wait to go back. So that is it for my Faroese adventure. Three videos, hundreds of epic photos taken and thank you for joining me on this journey. If you liked it, liked it. If you disliked it, dislike it. If you want to see more content, just click subscribe. I would love that. Until next time, happy snapping.